welcome back to my channel. My name is Roshni and this is Beti Grew Up. Today I'm doing another sit down video and I wanted to talk a little bit about setting boundaries. So if you haven't already, I made a video a while ago about toxic relationships. So if you're interested in that topic, definitely check out that video. I will link it above and in the description. So I wanted to kind of update you because, and my friend was actually talking to me about her struggle with setting boundaries and, and you know, kind of navigating that in new relationships. So as we were talking, I was like, it's crazy how much like I relate to what you're talking about. And that's exactly how I used to think, but I didn't realize how much I'd grown from that mindset. I realized that a lot of the work of setting boundaries was inner work that I had to go through. So I've compiled a list of, of things that I've kind of learned in terms of setting boundaries and hopefully some useful advice. So if you have any questions or if there's anything that I didn't mention or anything like that, then definitely let me know in the comment section because I would love to address your questions or to keep making these types of videos. So the first thing that I want you to know about setting boundaries is that your self-respect really grows out of this. So you know how like people walk into a room and they just absolutely own it or you know they just tell people no without like giving them reasons why or without apologizing like that's what I wanted I really admired people who could do that and I was like you know what I wish I could be like that one day and I didn't realize how synonymous boundary setting and self-respect were but if you think about it it makes sense you have to respect yourself in order to think you're worthy enough to set boundaries the second is that it happens over time and like I was saying you know it wasn't really a conscious effort for me to um, you know have like certain boundaries that I was asking everyone in my life to live by like when I first learned about you know how to set boundaries or realized that I probably needed to set them with a lot of people in my life I felt so overwhelmed I was like I don't even know how I'm gonna like go through all my relationships like one by one and like figure this out but honestly it really did just kind of happen naturally over time and this kind of has to do with my next tip, but it's that it's basically all about mindset. Like boundary setting is all about how you perceive the world, how you see yourself, how you see your relationships. And a lot of that mindset has to shift and has to kind of evolve for you to be able to feel like you can truly set boundaries. Because the thing is, when you're thinking about setting boundaries and you realize that you're someone who needs to set boundaries, it's probably because you are you know, someone that gets guilted by other people really easily. Other people can make you feel bad. You feel like you owe other people things. Um, you might feel like, you know, people are just going to judge you or not like you if you don't, you know, help them out or you don't be your, try your best. Um, sometimes you might just feel like you're being nice. Like sometimes you're just like, I'm a really nice person. I'm really friendly. I'm really genuine. But what you don't realize is that you're kind of using that as a disguise over or like the idea that you're not really good enough to set boundaries. And of course, if that just doesn't identify with you and you know that you are good at setting boundaries then obviously disregard this, but I just mean for anyone that, you know, feels like they really need this in their life, it's probably because you fall into one of the categories that I just mentioned. So to get from that mindset, like you're never going to be able to set boundaries in the mindset that, you know, you're guilty if you do so, or that you're a bad person person if you do so. So what you really need to do is like shift your entire idea of what setting boundaries even is. It's not a bad thing. It's not closing people off. It's not shutting people away. I thought that I would have to be like, you know, don't call me on these days, like hanging up on people or telling people like these, like writing them these long letters and telling them I didn't want them in my life anymore. Like none of that happened, but I feel like today I have really strong boundaries. And a lot of that happened because I started to reframe what it meant to set boundaries. I didn't feel like I needed to have this glass wall up between people. Um, I didn't feel like, you know, I needed to separate myself in that way. In fact, what setting boundaries helped me do was that when I was somewhere, when I was at an event or when I was hanging out with people, I was fully in the moment. And I was doing that because I knew that that's where I wanted to be. And if I was at home, then I was just fully at home embracing whatever that ended up looking like. So it's really important to, um, you know, realize why you feel guilty. Maybe do some journaling on this. And, you know, it takes a little time. You can ask yourself, you know, one question every weekend. Um, do a little bit of journaling on it. Put it away after 30 minutes or 20 minutes of writing. And then just, you know, hang out, live your life until the next weekend and revisit different questions. Hearing people's stories about, you know, 
how what they were able to achieve and accomplish once they set boundaries also really really helped me um and i heard a lot of that on like the girl boss podcast the black girl and own podcast being boss. a lot of what they talk about is you know having to give up family or having to give up social life because of those sacrifices or because of those boundaries they were able to make something beautiful and um you know that really inspired me to be to not judge myself for what I wasn't doing and think about what I could do. You really have to shift your perspective because if you're thinking how you're thinking now, which is you know I'm a bad person if I do this, I'm, a, I'm I can't say no to people, I need to just say yes, and everyone you know needs to be able to depend on me. If that's your main focus, then you're never going to be satisfied turning them down. You need to realize why you're doing this and what you're going to gain from it. Whether that's independence, whether that's a better sense of self, whether that's, you know, just being happier, whether that's being less stressed out, whether that's, you know, finding what your hobbies are again, there's so many benefits that can come from this, but you need to know what you're looking for and what you're trying to gain from this. And for me, a lot of it was just being independent and being able to stand on my own two feet. And like I said, like I didn't realize how deep all of these changes were really going until I sat down and thought about it recently. And again, that's what brought me to making this video. The next thing on my list, and just a quick thing I wanted to mention is that I know that all of this was really overwhelming sounding, but honestly, this becomes a muscle. Like the first and the hardest parts about setting, setting boundaries is, you know, figuring out how you need to do it, what you want, why you're doing it. And once you figure out all those small steps, it kind of just becomes who you are, right? Like you really are changing your perspective. You're changing how you spend your time. You're changing how your relationships are being handled. And so that you know, those are a lot of changes. Those are a lot of kind of groundbreaking things. But once you set the tone for the new way that you want things to go, that's just how they're going. That's your new normal that I'm always talking about. And you're setting that new normal for yourself, for everyone in your life. And again, that doesn't have to mean that you're cutting anyone off. It just means that you're kind of redefining how they see you, how they spend time with you, what they're allowed to say to you, things like that. And, you know, when you're doing that, A, you feel more in control, which makes you feel more confident to keep making decisions like that. Um, but you also, you know, have set up this new space for yourself, this new kind of life for yourself in which those boundaries already exist. You know what I mean? So you don't have to start from zero over and over again. Once something happens, you can address it at that point. But once you do all the groundwork, it kind of just becomes a muscle that you keep flexing every time you have to set a new boundary. So one of the biggest and most important lessons and like the biggest takeaway that I want you to get from this video is that when you set boundaries, you learn that you are inherently worthy and inherently respectable, regardless of your fame, your wealth, your success, uh, your financial situation, like regardless of any of that stuff, you realize that you are worthy just by being you, just by existing. And you realize that everyone's worthy too. And not only do you respect your own time more, but you also hopefully will respect other people's time more. And I point that out because in setting boundaries, you have to say, no, I'm important enough to carve out this two hour time period to, you know, dedicate that to my self care, to dedicate that to getting my butt outside and to the gym, to do something for myself. And it's ironic because those starting moments of self-care like working out and stuff like that it's so hard to start when once you start doing it but you keep doing it and it's easy to keep going because you realize that it's so good for you and you realize how happy it makes you and so it's kind of that initial push to get yourself out of bed to get yourself to take care of yourself and once you make that initial push it's going to keep giving back to you so much more so you, you really need to sit down with yourself and tell yourself that you're setting X, Y, and Z boundaries and that regardless of, you know, getting stuff done, regardless of your role in other people's lives, you deserve that time or you deserve whatever that boundary is that you want for yourself. I think that, you know, women and people that have had narcissistic parents or a narcissistic person raising them or in their lives from a young age um, really relate to this, but it's the idea that you are defined by your role for other people. So, you know, women, you know, we're always defined by being a mom, being a daughter, being a sister, being a girlfriend, being a wife, being a good newlywed, you know, being whatever it is. And so, you know, it's, we're being defined, who we are is being defined by how other people see us and how, how well we serve those other people in our lives. And it's the same thing for anyone that may have been raised with a narcissistic parent. Those people tend to make you feel like, you know, everything's about them. Everything revolves around how things affect them. So when you're a child, especially, and you're growing up around that, 
it's really hard to not make your entire life about someone else. Everything is walking on eggshells because what if they get mad or what if they freak out or, you know, what if they really, really love you one day and you didn't do anything different, but one day you're lovable and one day you're not. And I can make a whole other video on narcissistic parents, so let me know if you're interested. Um, but that's something that is, is huge and it's hard to break free from that idea. But once you recognize that idea that you are defining yourself by that role in someone else's life, you can meditate on it. You can think about it. You can let that sink in. And like I said, this takes time. Like this takes months and some of it is conscious and some of it's subconscious. Some of it's unconscious. Some of it you don't even know that you're trying to do or that you're working on. But over time, those changes really do take place. Don't freak out. You know, don't lose your mind. You'll definitely get there. It's totally possible for you. I mean, I've changed the leaps and bounds in setting boundaries and in growing and feeling strong enough to do this. And it's still only been maybe about a year. So that's really not that long of time and it doesn't matter if you're 50 or if you're 25 but you can definitely always start to set boundaries whenever you feel ready to start this journey is whenever this journey is ready for you you know what i mean like when you start to set boundaries a lot of it feels like turning people down turning people away it all seems really negative right it seems like you're just kind of living your own life and being selfish and that's not at all what setting boundaries really is but I did want to kind of touch on this and Brene Brown talks a lot about this so if you're interested definitely check out her book she spent a lot of years researching shame and she talks about the difference between guilt and shame so she says guilt is something that you feel when you did something bad right but shame is something that you feel when you feel like you are bad so, you know, one thing could happen, say you're a little kid, you break a lamp in your parent's house. When you feel guilty, you feel like, oh my god, I'm so sorry, I broke that lamp. That's, I'm still a good person, but I broke that lamp, that's my bad. When you feel shameful, you think, I am such a horrible person that I could break that lamp. Who do I think I am? Who am I that I think that I'm better than this possession or than the person who owns it? Who am I to break this, this item that this that belongs to this person, you know, like you really, really internalize it. And so definitely explore kind of which side of that you're on, because if it is shame, that is a much, much deeper battle. However, something else that Brene Brown says is important and something that's going to give you a little light of hope is that shame cannot survive being spoken. And I actually started this on my blog and on my Instagram a while ago, but just the hashtag shame chronicles. And I was like, talk about embarrassing stuff or things that made you feel awful, even if it's been 10, 15 years since they happened, because shame does not survive being spoken. And I promise you, once you say one embarrassing story or one shameful story, uh, 10, 15 other people will stand up and say that they have something similar that they've been through. You know, the craziest things like even if only one in a million people can relate to it, that's still multiple people on this planet that can relate to your story of shame. If you internalize everything and if you start setting boundaries and you're scared to do that because because you feel like you're a bad person for doing that, that's something that you're going to have to unpack a little bit, but realize that you're not a bad person for doing that. And even if you did something wrong, that's something wrong that you did. That's an action that you made, but it doesn't reflect on you being a bad person. And the last major point that I wanted to talk about is that setting boundaries with other people also means setting boundaries with yourself. And this goes back to my very first point about how you grow that self-respect and how boundaries and self-respect go hand in hand. So you need to genuinely commit to being a better person and commit to setting boundaries. Because I definitely know people, and I think we've all kind of been in a situation where we are, where we participate in a trigger or where we, you know, call an egg. A lot of the time, you know, we can do things, even if, even if they're, people or places or whatever outside of us that trigger us, we can still do our best to not put, a, put ourselves in situations where we're going to be triggered. You know what I mean? Like, don't get drunk and don't message your ex or don't go to that one club where you know you're probably going to see them or whatever it's going to be if you know that you can't handle it. You know what I mean? And some of us, again, just get addicted to the chaos. And I made another video on that. So if you think that that's something that you might, you know, be into or be interested in, um, I'll link that as well. But the idea that, you know, you kind of feed into this idea that there's a lot going on or that people need you or that you're kind of the center of attention in your own little world or, or you know, in your own little drama. And that can take 
a lot of time away and a lot of energy away from you and you're really just distracting yourself, right? Like you're kind of in this whirlwind and you can't really be in control and you can't really be held accountable and uh, it's like all these things are happening, but you can't be that kind of person and have a lot of self-respect and have strong boundaries because you're the one that's sabotaging those boundaries yourself. You know what I mean? So for other people to respect boundaries, you have to respect your own boundaries. And if you say that you're not going to talk to this person or if you broke up with that person, then move on, you know, or, you know, grow out of stalking someone on social media. Like those things aren't going to get you that far. But what will is being the kind of person that respects themselves and sets strong boundaries. That's going to attract someone that is better for you and that is worthy of your time. And on the same note, the more that you respect yourself, the more that it's going to be easier for other people to respect you. And like I was saying, people are going to be you're going to attract people that are actually worth your time when you respect yourself. But if you don't respect yourself and, you know, if other people just don't don't believe in you essentially, or don't believe that you mean what you say, then you're going to attract people that feel like they can kind of walk on, walk all over you or feel that they can kind of manipulate you or get this certain side of you that makes you kind of throw everything out the window and just put your attention on them. And that's not really going to get you anywhere either. So once you're able to start with yourself and set those firm boundaries with yourself or even include other people that you love and trust that will help hold you accountable for those things, um, that's where you really will start to grow. And once you do that with yourself, you'll start to realize how other people kind of respond to that and kind of see everyone sort of fall into line. And of course, if you need to have those conversations down the line as well, you can with certain people about certain issues that you need to address. But, you know, that will come in time and then you'll handle those one by one. And other than that, you know, you've pretty much created a really great life kind of on the terms that you've set for yourself without being too harsh, without cutting off everyone you know, without being antisocial or rude. You know what I mean? So it really is possible to be on the other side of feeling helpless or feeling out of control or feeling like other people are walking all over you. But it does take a lot of work and it takes a lot of discipline as well. Um, and with holding yourself accountable, you know, I have other friends that we kind of hold each other accountable. You know, my friend will message me and say, I sabotage myself and we'll talk about it and I'll do the same thing with her. I'll be like, I'm freaking out and I put myself in this position and I'm not managing my anxiety well and this is what I did that's wrong. Like, I need help here. And we'll talk through it. And the more that you start to have these kinds of conversations, the more that you'll find people and attract people that want to talk about these kinds of things. And that will lead you to a better life filled with people that again, are more worthy of your time and your love and your appreciation. So I really hope that this video helped you. Again, if you have any questions or have anything related to this topic that you want me to address or want me to know, let me know in the comments down below. Um, again, I really want to say thank you so much to all my new subscribers. Otherwise, I will see you in my video next week. I love you all. Happy healing.